Well, good morning and welcome to the Off Grid Homestead, where we're in our 48 volt system, having a look at an issue and seeing if we can try and find out what it is. Now, in one of my other videos, I left a link below so you could log into this system and have a look at it running and what it's doing and go in and have a look at all the system stats and just information about this system and, and uh, what it's doing. Now, one of my subscribers noticed when they went in and had a look at that system that I was getting some high DC ripple alarms showing up in the system. Now, I'm not going to say who that subscriber is because I'm not sure if they want their name mentioned or not, but I will say that was a great find, and it's always good to read the comments because there are people out there that also know about off-grid off -grid power and can actually give you some information and advice as well. So that was an awesome find to that subscriber. Thank you very much for bringing that to my attention, because now we need to have a look at that. So what DC Ripple is, is just a very, very slight spiking in the voltage. It's very, very fine. So if you have a look at the actual... Um, I'll call it waveform, and it's not actually quite right. If you, if people know what AC waveform looks like, you can see it sort of fluctuates uh, as it changes its polarity up and down in the straights 50 times a second. But on a DC waveform, it's very flat. So if you zoom right into that and go right in close, you'll see just slight little spikes, and that is ripple. So we've been getting high DC ripple, which is not good. That damages components and it's not good for the inverter. So we need to find out where that's coming from. And what I'm noticing when I look at that is it's happening when my batteries are 100% charged. So when they're not charged, when they're, when they're below 100%, we're not getting that issue. But when they're 100%, that's when we're starting to get little ripples and, and little spikes. So I've got a theory of, of, of one theory it could be. It could be a BMS issue with the batteries. It's, uh, DC Ripple can also come with uh, bad connections, but i tested the connections here and they're not but bad. And when I pull a high current, we're not getting it. So it's, I don't think it's a connection issue, but I think it could be this issue. So if you have a look at our solar charge controllers, we've got two solar charge controllers. Now we've got 3.2, 3.3 kilowatts worth of panels on the roof. So theoretically, one controller for these controllers, an 85 amp, can actually handle the entire two strings. But I've got the two controllers set up because, well, I had the two controllers in uh, used for previous projects and I'm breaking them up into the two strings so each controller runs its own string now the issue is have a look at this so what you notice is we've got a battery voltage here of 51 sorry 53.1 volts that's coming out of this controller the second con controller has a slightly different voltage. It's actually 0.2 a volt higher. Now, the reason for that is, well, it is to do with cable size and cable lengths. You see this cable here going from the controller down to the battery is a fairly thick cable where this cable here is not as thick. It's six mil cable, and I think that might be 10 mil cable. Now, it's not a huge issue because the cable that I've got running down here can handle the current that this produces because it doesn't produce a very high current for the cable. However, because I'm running two different size cables, which is not what you do, but I've, I've done that in this case, uh, and I'm not gonna explain why because I don't wanna go on all day on this video. I'm wondering if, because we've got a slight variation in voltage between the two controllers, once we hit 100% state of charge, this controller shuts off because of the higher voltage, and this controller acts as the master and continues to run the system for the rest of the day while it's at 100%. So I'm wondering if that is starting to cause a little bit of spiking with the two controllers going out of synchronization for the want for the better word. So what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect this controller and we're going to 
connect both strings to this controller and we're only going to run from the one controller and we're going to see if that's going to eliminate the DC ripple. Now if it does, then I can either leave this controller as one controller or I need to redo the cabling on this second controller. Now, this controller can handle 85 amps. The amps that are coming from the panel once it's done that conversion, we're looking at around, I think it's about 60 odd amps, 65 amps maximum that's gonna go into the batteries through the panels that I've got on the roof. So one controller can definitely handle both strings of panels. So let's change it over and let's see what happens. So I need to shut the system down while the controller side down and I'm going to take you with me as I do this. So I'm going to shut the two panels down and one thing that I want to show because I have been asked this are about these fusing. See the fuses that are in this are these fuses but how does that work? Well I do need to shut the, the controllers off from the batteries so we've disconnected the controllers from the solar so now we're going to disconnect the controllers from the battery and this fuse holder is also a disconnection switch as well so the way we do that is we just pull on this and now we have disconnected the solar controllers from the battery and we can see that these controllers are now turned off. So this is how, just a little bit of extra footage for you, so this is how these fuse holders actually hold the fuse. So I can actually do three of them if I want to uh, do three, but I just used to do the two, the positive, and the both positive and negative sides are fused. And all we do is we just, if I can do this one hand, uh, no, I can't. Um, there we go, we just lift up like that and then the fuse comes out and I've got an 80 amp fuse in that. So we can change our fuses across and then click that back down. A few moments later. Okay, so I've rerouted the cabling now so both strings goes into this controller. So what I need to do is I need to turn this on. So I'm going to bring you with me because we just might have a little bit of a spark as we energize this up, let's have a look to see what happens. There we go, there's our little sparks. So I'll just push those in. Righto, so I've brought this up to 60 amps. So we'll bring on our two strings and we will see what we're going to get in. So we're starting to fire up here. And we've got, there we go. Let me just put the lights on. So how many? Now it is, I think, around about 7 o'clock in the morning, 6.30 in the morning now. So we're getting two amps coming in from our uh, 3.2 kilowatts worth of solar on the roof because our sun hasn't quite hit our, um, there's our uh, wattage. So we're getting about 93 watts at the moment because the sun hasn't come up yet over the trees okay so that pedal that controller come on focus that controller is running off the two panels this controller is just going to sit idle for now and then if that fixes the issue i may remove this and just use one controller because it's going to handle the job i hope no dog you can't come outside that blue wants blue wants to go out the gate because he wants to go down and see the sheep no stay Animals, working with solar, working with animals, working with batteries. I don't know. Yeah, I think I might get in, must be coming down with a cold or something because I'm just not up to doing a video this morning, but I do want to bring this to you because I think this is an important uh, little bit of a problem solving that we need to do, and we need to do that together. So the sun there hasn't quite come over the trees yet, but it's not far off once it comes over the trees. The, you can see the in the background the panels are still in the shade so once the sun comes over those trees then we're going to start putting power in so what we're going to do is I'm going to upload this video so you um, know the issue and you can see that we're sort of uh, you're getting the information like I said I'm struggling doing this video I can't even talk at the moment uh, log in to the VRM portal I'll leave the link below you can go through all the settings you'll be able to see those alarms so 
keep an eye on that system and let's see if we keep getting these DC high DC ripple alarms. And if we're not, then that's the problem with the two controllers and having different cable size and cable lengths is causing that problem, which I'm, I'm thinking could be the case. If we're still getting the alarm, well, we need to figure it out from there. So if you like the video, give me a thumbs up, comment below, usual thing. We'll see you in the next video.